Rubik's Cube is a 3D combination puzzle invented in 1974 by Hungarian sculptor and professor of architecture Erno Rubik. Originally called the Magic Cube, the puzzle was licensed by Rubik to be sold by Ideal Toy Corporation in 1980 via businessman Tibor Laxey and Seven Towns founder Tom Kremer, and won the German Game of the Year Special Award for Best Puzzle that year. As of January 2009, 350 million cubes had been sold worldwide making it the world's top-selling puzzle game. It is widely considered to be the world's best-selling toy. On the original classic Rubik's Cube, each of the six faces was covered by nine stickers, each of one of six solid colors, white, red, blue, orange, green, and yellow. The current version of the cube has been updated to colored plastic panels instead, which prevents peeling and fading. In currently sold models, white is opposite yellow, blue is opposite green, and orange is opposite red, and the red, white and blue are arranged in that order in a clockwise arrangement. On early cubes, the position of the colors varied from cube to cube. An internal pivot mechanism enables each face to turn independently, thus mixing up the colors. For the puzzle to be solved, each face must be returned to have only one color. Similar puzzles have now been produced with various numbers of sides, dimensions, and stickers, not all of them by Rubik. Although the Rubik's Cube reached its height of mainstream popularity in the 1980s, it is still widely known and used. Many speed cubers continue to practice it and other twisty puzzles and compete for the fastest times in various categories. Since 2003, the World Cube Association, the Rubik's Cube's international governing body, has organized competitions worldwide and kept the official world records. Conception and Development Prior Attempts In March 1970, Larry D. Nichols invented a 2x2x2 puzzle with pieces rotatable in groups and filed a Canadian patent application for it. Nichols's cube was held together by magnets. Nichols was granted U.S. Patent 3,655,201 on the 11th of April, 1972, two years before Rubik invented his cube. On the 9th of April, 1970, Frank Fox applied to patent his spherical 3x3x3. He received his UK patent, 1,344,259, on the 16th of January, 1974. Rubik's invention, in the mid-1970s, Erno Rubik worked at the Department of Interior Design at the Academy of Applied Arts and Crafts in Budapest. Although it is widely reported that the cube was built as a teaching tool to help his students understand 3D objects, his actual purpose was solving the structural problem of moving the parts independently without the entire mechanism falling apart. He did not realize that he had created a puzzle until the first time he scrambled his new cube and then tried to restore it. Rubik obtained Hungarian patent HU 170062 for his Magic Cube in 1975. Rubik's Cube was first called the Magic Cube, thus Koka, in Hungary. The first test batches of the Magic Cube were produced in late 1977 and released in Budapest toy shops. Magic Cube was held together with interlocking plastic pieces that prevented the puzzle being easily pulled apart, unlike the magnets in Nichols's design. With Erno Rubik's permission, businessman Tibor Laxey took a cube to Germany's Nuremberg Toy Fair in February 1979 in an attempt to popularize it. It was noticed by Seven Towns founder Tom Kremer and they signed a deal with Ideal Toys in September 1979 to release the Magic Cube worldwide. Ideal wanted at least a recognizable name to trademark, of course, that arrangement put Rubik in the spotlight because the Magic Cube was renamed after its inventor in 1980. The puzzle made its international debut at the toy fairs of London, Paris, Nuremberg and New York in January and February 1980. After its international debut, 
the progress of the cube towards the toy shop shelves of the West was briefly halted so that it could be manufactured to Western safety and packaging specifications. A lighter cube was produced, and Ideal decided to rename it. The Gordian Knot and Inca Gold were considered, but the company finally decided on Rubik's Cube, and the first batch was exported from Hungary in May 1980. Subsequent History 1980s Cube Craze After the first batches of Rubik's Cubes were released in May 1980, initial sales were modest, but Ideal began a television advertising campaign in the middle of the year which it supplemented with newspaper adverts. At the end of 1980 Rubik's Cube won a German Game of the Year Special Award, and won similar awards for Best Toy in the UK, France, and the US. By 1981 Rubik's Cube had become a craze, and it is estimated that in the period from 1980 to 1983 around 200 million Rubik's Cubes were sold worldwide. In March 1981 the first speed cubing championship organized by the Guinness Book of World Records was held in Munich, and a Rubik's Cube was depicted on the front cover of Scientific American that same month. In June 1981 the Washington Post reported that the Rubik's Cube is a puzzle that's moving like fast food right now, this year's hula hoop or bongo board. And by September 1981 new scientists noted that the cube had captivated the attention of children of ages from 7 to 70 all over the world this summer. As most people could only solve one or two sides, numerous books were published including David Singh Master's Notes on Rubik's Magic Cube, 1980, and Patrick Bossert's You Can Do the Cube, 1981. At one stage in 1981 three of the top 10 best-selling books in the US were books on solving the Rubik's Cube, and the best-selling book of 1981 was James G. Norse's The Simple Solution to Rubik's Cube which sold over 6 million copies. In 1981 the Museum of Modern Art in New York exhibited a Rubik's Cube, and at the 1982 World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee a 6-foot cube was put on display. ABC Television even developed a cartoon show called Rubik, The Amazing Cube. In June 1982 the first Rubik's Cube World Championship took place in Budapest, and would become the only competition recognized as official until the championship was revived in 2003. In October 1982 the New York Times reported that sales had fallen and that the craze has died, and by 1983 it was clear that sales had plummeted. However, in some communist countries, such as China and USSR, the craze had started later and demand was still high because of a shortage of cubes. 21st Century Revival Rubik's Cubes continued to be marketed and sold throughout the 1980s and 90s, but it was not until the early 2000s that interest in the cube began increasing again. In the US sales doubled between 2001 and 2003, and the Boston Globe remarked that it was becoming cool to own a cube again. The 2003 World Rubik's Games Championship was the first speed cubing tournament since 1982. It was held in Toronto and was attended by 83 participants. The tournament led to the formation of the World Cube Association in 2004. Annual sales of Rubik branded cubes were said to have reached 15 million worldwide in 2008. Part of the new appeal was ascribed to the advent of internet video sites, such as YouTube, which allowed fans to share their solving strategies. Following the expiration of Rubik's patent in 2000, other brands of cubes appeared, especially from Chinese companies. Many of these Chinese branded cubes have been engineered for speed and are favored by speed cubers. Imitations, taking advantage of an initial shortage of cubes, many imitations and variations appeared, many of which may have violated one or more patents. Today, the patents have expired and many Chinese companies produce copies of, and in nearly all cases, improvements upon, the Rubik and V-Cube designs. Patent history, Nichols assigned his patent to his employer Molecular and Research Corporation, which sued Ideal in 1982. In 1984, Ideal lost the patent infringement suit and appealed.
In 1986, the appeals court affirmed the judgment that Rubik's 2x2x2 pocket cube infringed Nichols's patent, but overturned the judgment on Rubik's 3x3x3 cube. Even while Rubik's patent application was being processed, Terutoshi Aishiji, a self-taught engineer and ironworks owner near Tokyo, filed for a Japanese patent for a nearly identical mechanism, which was granted in 1976. Japanese patent publication JP55-008192 Until 1999, when an amended Japanese patent law was enforced, Japan's patent office granted Japanese patents for non-disclosed technology within Japan without requiring worldwide novelty. Hence, Aishiji's patent is generally accepted as an independent reinvention at that time. Rubik applied for more patents in 1980, including another Hungarian patent on the 28th of October. In the United States, Rubik was granted U.S. Patent 4,378,116 on the 29th of March, 1983, for the cube. This patent expired in 2000. Greek inventor Panagiotis Verdes patented a method of creating cubes beyond the 5x5x5, 5 5x5, 5, up to 11x11x11, 11 11x11, 11, in 2003. As of 2017, the 5x5x5, 6x6x6, 7x7x7, 8x8x8 and 9x9x9 models are in production in his V-Cube line. V-Cube also produces a 2x2x2, 3x3x3 and a 4x4x4. Trademarks, Rubik's brand limited also holds the registered trademarks for the word Rubik and Rubik's and for the 2D and 3D visualizations of the puzzle. The trademarks have been upheld by a ruling of the General Court of the European Union on the 25th of November 2014 in a successful defense against a German toy manufacturer seeking to invalidate them. However, European toy manufacturers are allowed to create differently shaped puzzles that have a similar rotating or twisting functionality of component parts such as for example Skewed, Pyraminx or Impossible. On 10 November 2016, Rubik's Cube lost a 10-year battle over a key trademark issue. The European Union's highest court, the Court of Justice ruled that the puzzle's shape was not sufficient to grant it trademark protection. Mechanics, a standard Rubik's Cube measures 5.7 cm, 214 in, on each side. The puzzle consists of 26 unique miniature cubes, also called cubies or cubelets. Each of these includes a concealed inward extension that interlocks with the other cubes while permitting them to move to different locations. However, the center cube of each of the six faces is merely a single square facade, all six are affixed to the core mechanism. These provide structure for the other pieces to fit into and rotate around. So there are 21 pieces, a single core piece consisting of three intersecting axes holding the six center squares in place but letting them rotate, and 20 smaller plastic pieces which fit into it to form the assembled puzzle. Each of the six center pieces pivots on a screw, fastener, held by the center piece, a 3D cross. A spring between each screw head and its corresponding piece tensions the piece inward, so that collectively, the whole assembly remains compact, but can still be easily manipulated. The screw can be tightened or loosened to change the feel of the cube. Newer official Rubik's brand cubes have rivets instead of screws and cannot be adjusted. The cube can be taken apart without much difficulty, typically by rotating the top layer by 45 degrees and then prying one of its edge cubes away from the other two layers. Consequently, it is a simple process to solve a cube by taking it apart and reassembling it in a solved state. There are six central pieces which show one colored face, 12 edge pieces which show two colored faces, and eight corner pieces which show three colored faces. Each piece shows a unique color combination, but not all combinations are present. For example, if red and orange are on opposite sides of the solved cube, there is no edge piece with both red and orange sides. 
The location of these cubes relative to one another can be altered by twisting an outer third of the cube 90 degrees, 180 degrees or 270 degrees, but the location of the colored sides relative to one another in the completed state of the puzzle cannot be altered. It is fixed by the relative positions of the center squares. However, cubes with alternative color arrangements also exist, for example, with the yellow face opposite the green, the blue face opposite the white, and red and orange remaining opposite each other. Douglas Hofstetter, in the July 1982 issue of Scientific American, pointed out that cubes could be colored in such a way as to emphasize the corners or edges, rather than the faces as the standard coloring does. But neither of these alternative colorings has ever become popular. Mathematics, permutations, the original, 3x3x3, Rubik's cube has 8 corners and 12 edges. There are 8, 40,320, ways to arrange the corner cubes. Each corner has 3 possible orientations, although only 7, of 8, can be oriented independently. The orientation of the 8th, final, corner depends on the preceding 7, giving 37, 2187, possibilities. There are 12 to, 239,500,800, ways to arrange the edges, restricted from 12 because edges must be in an even permutation exactly when the corners are, when arrangements of centers are also permitted, as described below. The rule is that the combined arrangement of corners, edges, and centers must be an even permutation, 11 edges can be flipped independently, with the flip of the 12th depending on the preceding ones, giving 211, 2048, possibilities. 8 factorial multiply with 3 power 7 multiply with 12 factorial divide by 2 and multiply with 2 power 11 is equal to 43, 252, 003, 274, 489, 856, 000, which is approximately 43 quintillion. The puzzle was originally advertised as having over 3 billion, 3 billion, combinations but only one solution. To put this into perspective, if one had as many standard-sized Rubik's cubes as there are permutations, one could cover the Earth's surface 275 times. The preceding figure is limited to permutations that can be reached solely by turning the sides of the cube. If one considers permutations reached through disassembly of the cube, the number becomes 12 times as large. Factorial of 8 multiply with 3 power 8 multiply with factorial of 12 multiply with 2 power 12 is equal 519, 024, 039, 293, 878, 272, 000, which is approximately 519 quintillion possible arrangements of the pieces that make up the cube but only 1 in 12 of these are actually solvable. This is because there is no sequence of moves that will swap a single pair of pieces or rotate a single corner or edge cube. Thus there are 12 possible sets of reachable configurations, sometimes called universes or orbits, into which the cube can be placed by dismantling and reassembling it. Center faces, the original Rubik's cube had no orientation markings on the center faces, although some carried the words Rubik's Cube on the center square of the white face, and therefore solving it does not require any attention to orienting those faces correctly. However, with marker pens, one could, for example, mark the central squares of an unscrambled cube with four colored marks on each edge, each corresponding to the color of the adjacent face. A cube marked in this way is referred to as a supercube. Some cubes have also been produced commercially with markings on all of the squares, such as the low shoe magic square or playing card suits. Cubes have also been produced where the nine stickers on a face are used to make a single larger picture, and center orientation matters on these as well. Thus one can nominally solve a cube yet have the markings on the centers rotated, 
it then becomes an additional test to solve the centers as well. Marking the Rubik's Cube centers increases its difficulty because this expands the set of distinguishable possible configurations. There are 46 stroke 2, 2048, ways to orient the centers since an even permutation of the corners implies an even number of quarter turns of centers as well. In particular, when the cube is unscrambled apart from the orientations of the central squares, there will always be an even number of center squares requiring a quarter turn. Thus orientations of centers increases the total number of possible cube permutations from 43, 252, 003, 274, 489, 856, 000, 4.3x 1019, to 88, 580, 102, 706, 155, 225, 088, 000, 8.9x 1022. When turning a cube over is considered to be a change in permutation then we must also count arrangements of the center faces. Nominally there are 6 ways to arrange the 6 center faces of the cube, but only 24 of these are achievable without disassembly of the cube. When the orientations of centers are also counted, as above, this increases the total number of possible cube permutations from 88, 580, 102, 706, 155, 225, 088, 000, 8.9x 1022, to 2, 125, 922, 464, 947, 725, 402, 112, 000, 2.1x 1024. Algorithms, in Rubik's Cuber's parlance, a memorized sequence of moves that has a desired effect on the cube is called an algorithm. This terminology is derived from the mathematical use of algorithm, meaning a list of well-defined instructions for performing a task from a given initial state, through well-defined successive states, to a desired end state. Each method of solving the Rubik's Cube employs its own set of algorithms, together with descriptions of what effect the algorithm has, and when it can be used to bring the cube closer to being solved. Many algorithms are designed to transform only a small part of the cube without interfering with other parts that have already been solved so that they can be applied repeatedly to different parts of the cube until the whole is solved. For example, there are well-known algorithms for cycling three corners without changing the rest of the puzzle or flipping the orientation of a pair of edges while leaving the others intact. Some algorithms do have a certain desired effect on the cube. For example, swapping two corners, but may also have the side effect of changing other parts of the cube, such as permuting some edges. Such algorithms are often simpler than the ones without side effects and are employed early on in the solution when most of the puzzle has not yet been solved and the side effects are not important. Most are long and difficult to memorize. Towards the end of the solution, the more specific, and usually more complicated, algorithms are used instead. Relevance and application of mathematical group theory, Rubik's Cube lends itself to the application of mathematical group theory, which has been helpful for deducing certain algorithms, in particular, those which have a commutator structure, namely Zykes 1y1, where x and y are specific moves or move sequences and x1 and y1 are their respective inverses, or a conjugate structure, namely Zykes 1, often referred to by speed cubers colloquially as a setup move. In addition, the fact that there are well-defined subgroups within the Rubik's Cube group enables the puzzle to be learned and mastered by moving up through various self-contained levels of difficulty. For example, one such level could involve solving cubes which have been scrambled using only 180 degree turns. 
These subgroups are the principle underlying the computer cubing methods by Fist Lethwaite and Cosimba, which solve the cube by further reducing it to another subgroup. Solutions, move notation, many 3x3x3 3x3 Rubik's cube enthusiasts use a notation developed by David Singh Master to denote a sequence of moves, referred to as Singh Master notation. Its relative nature allows algorithms to be written in such a way that they can be applied regardless of which side is designated the top or how the colors are organized on a particular cube. F. Front, the side currently facing the solver B. Back, the side opposite the front U. Up, the side above or on top of the front side D. Down, the side opposite the top, underneath the cube L. Left. The side directly to the left of the front are, right, the side directly to the right of the front, front two layers, the side facing the solver and the corresponding middle layer B, back two layers, the side opposite the front and the corresponding middle layer U, up two layers, the top side and the corresponding middle layer D, down two layers, the bottom layer and the corresponding middle layer L, left two layers. The side to the left of the front and the corresponding middle layer are, right two layers, the side to the right of the front and the corresponding middle layer X, rotate, rotate the entire cube on R Y, rotate, rotate the entire cube on U Z, rotate, rotate the entire cube on F when a prime symbol, follows a letter, it denotes a face turn counterclockwise, while a letter without a prime symbol denotes a clockwise turn. A letter followed by a 2, occasionally a superscript 2, denotes 2 turns, or a 180 degree turn. R is right side clockwise, but R is right side counterclockwise. The letters X, Y, and Z are used to indicate that the entire cube should be turned about one of its axes, corresponding to R, U, and F turns respectively. When X, Y or Z are primed, it is an indication that the cube must be rotated in the opposite direction. When they are squared, the cube must be rotated 180 degrees. The most common deviation from Singh Master notation, and in fact the current official standard, is to use W, for wide, instead of lowercase letters to represent moves of two layers, thus, a move of RW is equivalent to one of our four methods using middle layer turns, particularly corners first methods, there is a generally accepted MES extension to the notation where letters M, E, and S denote middle layer turns. It was used for example in Mark Waterman's algorithm. M, middle, the layer between L and R, turn direction as L, top down, E, equator, the layer between U and D, turn direction as D, left right, S, standing, the layer between F and B. Turn direction as F the 4x 4x4 and larger cubes use an extended notation to refer to the additional middle layers. Generally speaking, a per case letters, F B U D L R, refer to the outermost portions of the cube, called faces. Lowercase letters, F B U D L R, refer to the inner portions of the cube, called slices. An asterisk, L, a number in front of it, 2L or two layers in parentheses, LL, means to turn the two layers at the same time, both the inner and the outer left faces, for example, RR, L2F means to turn the two rightmost layers anticlockwise, then the left inner layer twice, and then the inner front layer anticlockwise. By extension, four cubes of 6x6 and larger, moves of three layers are notated by the number 3, for example, 3L. An alternative notation, Wollstenholm notation, is designed to make memorizing sequences of moves easier for novices. This notation uses the same letters for faces except it replaces U with T, top, so that all are consonants. The key difference is the use of the vowels O, A and I for clockwise, anticlockwise and 180 degree turns which results in word-like sequences such as lota rato lata roti, equivalent to lurularu 2 in Singh Master notation. Addition of a C implies rotation of the entire cube, so rock is the clockwise rotation of the cube around its right face. 
Middle layer moves are denoted by adding an M to corresponding face move, so rim means a 180 degree turn of the middle layer adjacent to the R face. Another notation appeared in the 1981 book The Simple Solution to Rubik's Cube. Sing Master notation was not widely known at the time of publication. The faces were named top, T, bottom, B, left, L, right, R, front, F, and posterior, P, with plus 4 clockwise, 4 anticlockwise and 2 for 180 degree turns. Another notation appeared in the 1982 The Ideal Solution Book for Rubik's Revenge. Horizontal planes were noted as tables, with table 1 or T1 starting at the top. Vertical front to back planes were noted as book, with book 1 or B1 starting from the left. Vertical left to right planes were noted as windows, with window 1 or W1 starting at the front. Using the front face as a reference view, table moves were left or right, book moves were up or down, and window moves were clockwise or counterclockwise. Optimal solutions, although there are a significant number of possible permutations for the Rubik's Cube, a number of solutions have been developed which allow solving the cube in well under 100 moves. Many general solutions for the Rubik's Cube have been discovered independently. David Singh Master first published his solution in the book Notes on Rubik's Magic Cube in 1981. This solution involves solving the cube layer by layer, in which one layer, designated the top, is solved first, followed by the middle layer, and then the final and bottom layer. After sufficient practice, solving the cube layer by layer can be done in under one minute. Other general solutions include corners first methods or combinations of several other methods. In 1982, David Singh Master and Alexander Free hypothesized that the number of moves needed to solve the Rubik's Cube, given an ideal algorithm, might be in the low 20s. In 2007, Daniel Kunkel and Gene Cooperman used computer search methods to demonstrate that any 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube configuration can be solved in 26 moves or fewer. In 2008, Thomas Rakicki lowered that number to 22 moves, and in July 2010, a team of researchers including Rakicki, working with Google, proved the so-called God's number to be 20. This is optimal since there exist some starting positions which require a minimum of 20 moves to solve. More generally, it has been shown that an NXNXN Rubik's Cube can be solved optimally in N2 log N moves. Speed cubing methods In 1981, 13-year-old Patrick Bossert developed a solution for solving the cube, along with a graphical notation, designed to be easily understood by novices. It was subsequently published as You Can Do the Cube and became a bestseller. A solution commonly used by speed cubers was developed by Jessica Friedrich. This method is called CFOP, standing for cross, F2L, all, PLL. It is similar to the layer by layer method but employs the use of a large number of algorithms, especially for orienting and permuting the last layer. The cross is done first followed by first layer corners and second layer edges simultaneously, with each corner paired up with the second layer edge piece, thus completing the first two layers, F to L. This is then followed by orienting the last layer, then permuting the last layer, all and PLL respectively. Friedrich's solution requires learning roughly 120 algorithms but allows the cube to be solved in only 55 moves on average. Philip Marshall's The Ultimate Solution to Rubik's Cube takes a different approach, averaging only 65 twists yet requiring the memorization of only two algorithms. The cross is solved first, followed by the remaining edges, then five corners, and finally the last three corners. A now well-known method was developed by Lars Petrus. In this method, a 2x2x2 section is solved first, followed by a 2x2x3, and then the incorrect edges are solved using a 3-move algorithm, which eliminates the need for a possible 32-move algorithm later. The principle behind this is that in layer by layer you must constantly break and fix the first layer, 
The 2x, 2x2 and 2x, 2x3 sections allow three or two layers to be turned without ruining progress. One of the advantages of this method is that it tends to give solutions in fewer moves. The Roux method, developed by Gilles Roux, is similar to the Petrus method in that it relies on block building rather than layers, but derives from corners first methods. In Roux, a 3x, 2x1 block is solved, followed by another 3x, 2x1 on the opposite side. Next, the corners of the top layer are solved. The cube can then be solved using only moves of the U layer and M slice. In 1997, Denny Dedmore published a solution described using diagrammatic icons representing the moves to be made, instead of the usual notation. Beginner's method, most beginner solution methods involve solving the cube one layer at a time, using algorithms that preserve what has already been solved. The easiest layer by layer methods require only 3-8 algorithms. Rubik's Cube Solver Program The most move optimal online Rubik's Cube Solver programs use Herbert Cosimba's two-phase algorithm which can typically determine a solution of 20 moves or less. The user has to set the color configuration of the scrambled cube and the program returns the steps required to solve it. Competitions and records Speed cubing competitions, speed cubing, or speed solving, is the practice of trying to solve a Rubik's cube in the shortest time possible. There are a number of speed cubing competitions that take place around the world. The first world championship organized by the Guinness Book of World Records was held in Munich on the 13th of March, 1981. All cubes were moved 40 times and lubricated with petroleum jelly. The official winner, with a record of 38 seconds, was Juri Froskel, born in Munich. The first international world championship was held in Budapest on 5 June, 1982, and was won by Min Tai, a Vietnamese student from Los Angeles, with a time of 22.95 seconds. Since 2003, the winner of a competition is determined by taking the average time of the middle three of five attempts. However, the single best time of all tries is also recorded. The World Cube Association maintains a history of world records. In 2004, the WCA made it mandatory to use a special timing device called a Stackmat timer. In addition to the main 3x3x3 event, the WCA also holds events where the cube is solved in different ways. Blindfolded solving multiple blindfolded solving, or multi-blind, in which the contestant solves any number of cubes blindfolded in a row solving the cube using a single hand solving the cube with one's feet solving the cube in the fewest possible moves in blindfolded solving. The contestant first studies the scrambled cube, that is, looking at it normally with no blindfold, and is then blindfolded before beginning to turn the cube's faces. Their recorded time for this event includes both the time spent memorizing the cube and the time spent manipulating it. In multiple blindfolded, all of the cubes are memorized, and then all of the cubes are solved once blindfolded, thus, the main challenge is memorizing many, often ten or more, separate cubes. The event is scored not by time but by the number of solved cubes minus the number of unsolved cubes after one hour has elapsed. In fewest moves solving, the contestant is given one hour to find his or her solution and must write it down. Records, single time, the world record time for solving a 3x3x3 Rubik's cube is 4.22 seconds, held by Felix Zemdebs of Australia set on the 6th of May 2018 at the Cube 4 Cambodia 2018 average time. The world record average of the middle three of five solved times, which excludes the fastest and slowest, is 5.80 seconds, set by Felix Zemdebs of Australia at the Malaysia Cube Open 2017. One-handed solving, the world record fastest one-handed solve is 6.88 seconds, set by Felix Zemdebs of Australia on the 10th of May 2015 at Canberra Autumn 2015. The world record fastest average of five one-handed solves is 9.99 seconds, 
set by Max Park of United States at Thanks, for the Invite 2018. Feet solving, the world record fastest Rubik's Cube solve with one's feet is 16.96 seconds, set by Daniel Rose Levine of the United States on the 9th of March 2018 at Heartland Champs 2018. The world record average of 5 feet solves is 23.69 seconds, also set by Daniel Rose Levine on the 15th of April 2018 at SE Champ 2018. Blindfold solving, the world record fastest Rubik's Cube solved blindfolded is 17.87 seconds, including memorization, set by Max Hilliard of United States on 19 November 2017 at Texas BLD Showdown 2017. The world record mean of three blindfold solves is 22.36 seconds, set by Angelo Zhang of the United States on the 18th of November 2017 at Longhorn Cube Day 2017. Multiple blindfold solving, the world record for multiple Rubik's Cube solving blindfolded is 43 out of 44 cubes, set by Mark Boyanowski of the United States on the 24th of March 2018 at Keep Portland Quiet 2018. Boyanowski inspected 44 cubes, donned a blindfold, and solved 43 of them, all under the time limit of one hour. Fewest moves solving, the world record of fewest moves to solve a cube, given one hour to determine one's solution, is 19. This has been achieved by Tim Wong of the United States on the 11th of October 2015 at Irvine Fall 2015 by Marcel Peters of Germany on the 9th of January 2016 at Cubalonia 2016, by Vladislav Ashikov of Belarus on the 27th of August 2016 at Su Open 2016, and by Beqiang Dong of China on the 30th of April 2018 at Beijing Open 2018. The world record mean of three fewest moves challenges, with different scrambles, is 24.00, set by Walker Welch of the United States on the 15th of October 2017 at FMC Americas 2017. Non-human solving, the fastest non-human Rubik's Cube solve was performed by the Rubik's Contraption, a robot made by Ben Katz and Jared Di Carlo. A YouTube video shows a 0.38 second solving time using a nuclear with the min2 phase algorithm. Next record is 0.637 seconds, set by Sub1, a robot made by Adam Beer, an economist and industrial engineer. A YouTube video shows a 0.637 second solving time. This improves the robot's old record. 0.887 seconds performed using an Arduino with the Cosimba algorithm. Next record is 3.25 seconds, set by Cube Stormer III, a robot built using Lego Mindstorms and a Samsung Galaxy S4. This beats the prior 5.27 seconds, set by Cube Stormer II, a robot built using Lego Mindstorms and a Samsung Galaxy S2. This had in turn broken the previous record of 10.69 seconds, achieved by final year computing students at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne, Australia in 2011. Highest order physical NXNXN cube solving, Douglas Shamlin JR solved a 17x17x17 17x17 in 1 hour and 6 seconds. Top 6 solvers by single solve, Felix Zemdeds with 4.22 seconds in Cube 4 Cambodia 2018 competition Soon Biam Cho, with 4.59 seconds in Chika Ghosts 2017 competition. Patrick Ponce with 4.69 seconds in Rally in the Valley 2017 competition. Mats Vok with 4.74 seconds in Joya Timur Open 2016 competition. Drew Brads with 4.76 seconds in Bluegrass Spring 2017 competition. Bill Wang with 4.76 seconds in Pikering Spring 2018 competition. Group solving, 12 minutes, 
The record for most people solving a Rubik's Cube at once in 12 minutes is 134, set on 17 March 2010 by schoolboys from Dr. Challoner's Grammar School, Amersham, England, breaking the previous Guinness World Record of 96 people at once. Group solving, 30 minutes, on 21 November, 2012, at the O2 Arena in London, 1,414 people, mainly students from schools across London, solved the Rubik's Cube in under 30 minutes, breaking the previous Guinness World Record of 937. The event was hosted by Depol UK. On 4 November, 2012, 3,248 people, mainly students of College of Engineering Pyun, successfully solved the Rubik's Cube in 30 minutes on college ground. The successful attempt is recorded in the Limca Book of Records. The college will submit the relevant data, witness statements and video of the event to Guinness authorities. Variations There are different variations of Rubik's Cubes with up to 33 layers, the 2x2x2, pocket mini cube, the standard 3x3x3 cube, the 4x4x4, Rubik's Revenge Master Cube, and the 5x5x5, Professor's Cube, being the most well-known. The 17x17x17 over the top cube, available late 2011, was until December 2017 the largest, and most expensive, costing more than $2,000, commercially sold cube. A working design for a 22x22x22 cube exists and was demonstrated in January 2016, and a 33x33 in December 2017. Chinese manufacturer Shen Shou has been producing cubes in all sizes from 2x2x2 to 10x10x10, as of late 2013, and have also come out with an 11x11x11. Non-licensed physical cubes as large as 13x13x13 based on the V-Cube patents are commercially available to the mass market circa 2015 in China, these represent about the limit of practicality for the purpose of speed solving competitively. As the cubes become increasingly ungainly and solve times increase quadratically, there are many variations of the original cube, some of which are made by Rubik. The mechanical products include the Rubik's Magic, 360, and Twist. Also, electronics like the Rubik's Revolution and Slide were also inspired by the original. One of the newest 3x3x3 cube variants is the Rubik's Touch Cube. Sliding a finger across its faces causes its patterns of colored lights to rotate the same way they would on a mechanical cube. The Touch Cube also has buttons for hints and self-solving, and it includes a charging stand. The Touch Cube was introduced at the American International Toy Fair in New York on 15 February, 2009. The cube has inspired an entire category of similar puzzles, commonly referred to as twisty puzzles, which includes the cubes of different sizes mentioned above as well as various other geometric shapes. Some such shapes include the tetrahedron, pyraminx, the octahedron, scube diamond, the dodecahedron, megaminx, the icosahedron, dudgic. There are also puzzles that change shapes such as Rubik's snake and the square one. In 2011, Guinness World Records awarded the largest order Rubik's magic cube to a 17x17x17 cube, made by Oscar van Deventer. On 2 December 2017, Gregor Fennig announced that he had broken this record, with the 33x33x33 cube, and that his claim had been submitted to Guinness for verification. On 8 April 2018, Gregor Fennig announced another world record, the 2x2x50 cube. Whether this is a replacement for the 33x33x33 record, or an additional record, remains to be seen. Since 2015, with the mass production of the ICOSAX, all five platonic solids analogous to Rubik's Cube, face turning with cuts one-third from each face, except the pyraminx, 
which also has turnable tips, became available. Besides Rubik's Cube, the Tetrahedron is available as the Pyraminx, the Octahedron as the Face-Turning Octahedron, the Dodecahedron as the Megaminx, and the Icosahedron as the Icosax. Some puzzles have also been created in the shape of the Kepler points at Polyhedra, such as Alexander's Star, a great Dodecahedron. Custom-built puzzles, puzzles have been built resembling the Rubik's Cube or based on its inner workings. For example, a cuboid is a puzzle based on the Rubik's Cube, but with different functional dimensions, such as 2x, 2x4, 2x, 3x4, and 3x, 3x5. Many cuboids are based on 4x, 4x4 or 5x, 5x5 mechanisms, via building plastic extensions or by directly modifying the mechanism itself. Some custom puzzles are not derived from any existing mechanism, such as the Yugaminx V1.5 V2, Bevel Cube, Superx, Toru, Rua, and 1x 2x3. These puzzles usually have a set of masters 3D printed, which then are copied using molding and casting techniques to create the final puzzle. Other Rubik's Cube modifications include cubes that have been extended or truncated to form a new shape. An example of this is the Tradger's Octahedron, which can be built by truncating and extending portions of a regular 3x3. Most shape mods can be adapted to higher order cubes. In the case of Tony Fisher's Rhombic Dodecahedron, there are 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, and 6x6 versions of the puzzle. Rubik's Cube Software Puzzles like the Rubik's Cube can be simulated by computer software, which provide functions such as recording of player metrics, storing scrambled cube positions, conducting online competitions, analyzing of move sequences, and converting between different move notations. Software can also simulate very large puzzles that are impractical to build, such as 100x 100x 100 and 1000x 1000x 1000 cubes, as well as virtual puzzles that cannot be physically built, such as 4 and 5 dimensional analogs of the cube. Chrome Cube Lab Google has released the Chrome Cube Lab in association with Herno Rubik. The site has various interactive objects based on Rubik's Cube. Customized versions of Rubik's Cube can be created and uploaded.